be rising every day. What's going on, beautiful bees? Hope you guys are doing well. Just been working in the yard, doing a lot of harvesting. So stay tuned. Um, I'm going to try to show you guys a video on the sunflowers. They're fine, their heads are finally starting to open. But um, I still get some comments now and then about soy. And so I wanted to just do a quick video today on why I personally don't eat soy. I don't, I don't even mess around with soy. I, I used to when I was going in the plant-based world and looking for a good protein source. So I'll just share with you my experience with soy. And basically with my nutrition program, you can see with all the different doctors, there's still varying opinions about soy. A lot of controversy with soy. People are very passionate uh, because some people really um, attach themselves to food. So if you talk bad about it, then you know that that really affects them, and especially if they eat it every day. So. This is just my own personal experience. And so what I'm learning in nutrition is it really comes down to every own individual's health and their own biochemistry. For me, a lot of the soy is genetically modified. It's heavily sprayed. That impacts the microbiome in so many ways. I have, I'm highly against pesticides, the spraying of our food, and then genetically modification of our food really starts with the seeds, organic seeds, good quality soil, not sprayed. I want to put that out there. So when I went more on the plant, plant-based plant world, I went to soy as a touted as a good quality protein. And what I started noticing as I started eating more soy, my menstrual cramps became way more painful and I didn't make the association at that time. And I kept hearing scientific studies that promote uh, the health benefits of soy and phytoestrogens are healthy. And you know, the sci a lot of science out there was pointing towards health benefits. However, in my own personal experience, that was not the case. And um, I started looking at, okay, what is it that I'm doing that could potentially be contributing to these painful menstrual cramps? And I started really analyzing my diet. What did I change while well, I increased my soy consumption? So as soon as I started removing the soy, and I'm talking about eating more whole foods, fresh foods, getting rid of the processed foods because that can also contain a lot of soy lecithin. As soon as I took soy out, my painful menstrual cramps went down. I used to take several Advils uh, a day for the painful menstrual cramps, never been so severe. And as soon as I removed the soy, the cramps got better and then over time they completely disappeared. And I played around with it too, you guys. I, then I introduced it again, the pain would come back. So that's where now I look at health on an individual basis. We may, there may be scientific studies of, you know, for certain foods, certain health benefits of the food, but it really comes down to how does this food react in your body and what are you experiencing? Soy also is high in phytic acid which disrupts digestive enzymes. And there's also enzyme inhibitors. So what that does is it can prevent the absorption of calcium and magnesium, important minerals in the body. So I personally stay away from soy. Um, there's been health benefits of fermented soy that could be debated for sure, 
but again, I don't, I don't eat soy at all. I, and I can find way healthier protein sources. So thank you so much for tuning in. I thought I'd give more of a background of why I don't consume soy at all. And it really comes down to the painful menstrual cramps. So if you have painful menstrual cramps, you may want to remove soy from your diet. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys take care of yourselves as always. Be your beautiful selves. Be getting in some whole healthy fresh foods, some nature, some sunshine, some fresh air. When you do that, we'll all be rising.